It's going to require billions of gallons of sustainable aviation fuel. And you simply can't get to net zero by 2050 without biofuels. We are decades away from commercial electric flights. In the meantime, sustainable fuels are crucial as airlines race towards net zero. Australia will have a sustainable aviation fuel refinery in Queensland following an agreement between Qantas Airbus and the Queensland government. India plans to mandate the use of 1% of sustainable aviation fuel for domestic airlines in a bid to cut emissions from the sector by the year 2025. Yeah, Scott, you guys just announced a new uh, investment fund, a sustainable aviation-oriented investment fund. United, along with five other corporate partners, will be uh, collectively putting in $100 million. SAF, sustainable aviation fuel, renewable or alternative aviation fuel, or as it is now being called in Norway and Sweden, non-fossil based fuel. There are various names that have been developed by NGOs, industry leaders and technical experts. What we do know is that the fuel is needed by the airline industry in greater supply and with further investment. Right now, it's still an industry where there's a lot of hope and a lot of big expectations and a hype, which is really good, but the industry is not there yet, right? There's very few quantities available of SAF in the market. So a lot of airlines are getting ready, getting their supply chain and their procurement contract in place and waiting for that SAF to be available. Politically right now, there is a desire to see sustainable aviation fuel, it's a hard to decarbonize sector. It's not something that you can easily electrify or use hydrogen. So SAF is, a, is what we can use today. It's a very technical thing. We've got a lot of planes. These planes will have a lifetime of 30, 40 years and they run on liquid fuels. After the grounding of aviation due to COVID-19, which was a never seen before situation, crisis talks followed to understand how the industry would return. The discussion turned to sustainability and the industry agreed to sign and follow the Build Back Better political movement, which began in Brussels in 2020. When COVID struck and aircraft were grounded, I actually thought my days were ended in terms of covering this area. Um, my feeling at the time was, well, if there's no aircraft flying around, even when traffic does come back again, sustainability won't be as important. I was actually proved completely wrong. At this time, coalitions and alliances, including Fly Green Alliance, set up in 2019, set to work and work began across the sector to create a sustainable return to travel through increased use of sustainable aviation fuel. And here we are post-COVID, um, and actually sustainability has become even more important. What we see is a lot of people talking together, and that has never happened before. Today we have agriculture industry talking to us, talking to refiner, uh, refiner talking with uh, private investment, and also who else? Okay, transporters, okay, everyone, okay, is looking at this government, sorry, I forgot to tell, government, okay? That gives some also heaviness, I think, to the discussions. There are currently around 23,600 planes in service. In 2019, 95 billion gallons of jet fuel was sold. This equates to around 3 billion tonnes. One tonne of jet fuel produces approximately 3 tonnes of CO2. If we switch to using sustainable aviation fuel, the carbon reduction can be up to 80% on the life cycle. SAF technology has been publicly known about since 2008 and was first created to support the energy security of the aviation sector.
Honeywell's been a uh, technology provider in renewable fuels for well over a decade. And we actually produced our first sustainable aviation fuel back in 2008. Since then, uh, we've seen a, really a, a complete shift change in the market in the last 24 months or so. 90% of the projects that we have signed have been focused on SAF production and SAF as the key product. And we see that globally, not just in mandated markets. We also recognize that until there's any new technology in terms of zero emission aircraft, SAF will be the only viable solution to decarbonize. And we follow a portfolio approach. We have so far secured a couple of MOUs, for example, with OMB, with Neste, and we have also made equity investments. What is unique in the aviation industry, I see that the airlines are eager to set themselves higher targets, to commit themselves to higher targets than only the man man mandatory, meaning the regulation is set giving them. So I think this is very unique and very special. The speed is tremendous. And as a fuel supplier, you cannot simply lay back and look at this development. You need to stand up and do something now. Our total planetary carbon budget is one trillion tons. Since 1860 to present day, we've already used 500 billion tons of those. As we now use 50 billion tons per year on living in industry, we'll reach our total carbon budget in around 10 years time if we don't switch and reduce carbon now. Ripsol, we've made a clear commitment to society. We want to become a net zero emissions company by 2050. The commitment that uh, Repsol has is real. We are almost uh, arrived to the point that we will be producing SAF. Yeah? In fact, at the end of this year, a new plant in the south of Spain, 200,000 tons of SAF EFA ready to be delivered to all the airlines. We are using as feedstock, used cooking oil, forest waste, waste in general, and we are able to produce renewable fuels. OMV is a very strong regional player in the region of Austria, South Germany, as well as Romania and some surrounding countries. Right now we're producing already this 4,000 tons of SAF in the refinery in Schwechat, which is uh, very close to the Vienna airport. Um, as a company, we've signed several MOUs with big airline customers, and one of them is Lufthansa, Ryanair, Wizz Air. The used cooking oil that we have as a feedstock for our plant is regionally sourced. It comes directly from the area. It is pre-treated across the water, across the Danube, from the refinery. There are seven different technologies which can scale currently, which meet the ASTM standards, which deems them safe to be put into a plane's tank. The most commonly used material or feedstock is UCO, used cooking oil, but that isn't enough recycled cooking oil to switch the whole global jet fuel supply. This means we need to expand the number of technical pathways, find new feedstocks and low cost ways to displace fossil based jet fuel from the market that we so rely on. I, I joke with people who don't know what I do for a living that my job is to look at the whole world and say, yeah, I can turn that into jet fuel, yeah. you know? Uh, and so that's, that's really what we're doing, is we're focusing on what are those things that we can convert and convert efficiently and profitably. We have an abundance of CO2. CO2 can also be used as a feedstock and can be extracted from the air. Take the C from CO2 and the H from H2O and combine these together to make a hydrocarbon. This is what renewable jet fuel is made from. This is called an e-fuel, a synthetic fuel or a power to liquid fuel. Right now, SAF equals biofuels basically, that they are biogenic fuels, but in the future we could see uh, the evolution of, uh, of power to liquid. You take water, you zap it with electricity, you split oxygen to hydrogen, 
take the, the hydrogen from the water and take the, the captured C from the CO2 through direct air capture, mix it together and you get hydrocarbons. That's really far away into the future, but we see that it's sort of beginning to emerge as a potential technology. So in terms of challenges, it's finding the right technologies, making sure they're de-risked enough that they can scale directly. Because the main thing for us when we're looking at investments and we don't have uh, you know, all the money to, to put in these plants ourselves, so we'll be with partners who are helping us invest, they have to have that security of what is that policy going to be to, to support that investment that's required to put in place. It's starting to come together, but it's not all quite there yet. We're writing policy and we're putting policy in place, and no one's thinking about how does that translate to business. Fly Green Alliance was established in 2019 to do just that. Working cross-sector on mechanisms, policies, and transition strategies to ensure global commitment to low-carbon travel through SAF. So we, you know, we do a lot of advocacy, we build business cases, so that's kind of what uh, the kind of nitty gritty of our work. Work is there, the technology is there, it's, it's getting the finance moving, and it's a future investment. With the US and EU now legislating commitment to producing SAF and holding the majority of 60% of the jet fuel market, this shift in policy and law is extremely significant with regards to aviation meeting its net zero target. It is said that we will need 175 billion per year up to 2050 to meet the SAF investment targets. The UN aviation body ICAO lists 5,000 separate airlines. If we asked one third of those airlines to aggregate 100 million each, the calculations show we would meet the 175 billion per year targets. Andrew, let's bring in Scott Kirby, CEO of United Airlines. Uh, uh, Scott, you guys just announced a new uh, investment fund, a sustainable aviation-oriented investment fund. You know, what's exciting about this, this is unique. I think it's a first of its kind because we're not just buying sustainable aviation fuel. We're really investing in the technology, the R&D, the companies that are trying to build this industry because this industry really doesn't exist today. And so that's what this fund is about, investing in building the industry from scratch. With United Airlines and their five corporate partners aggregating an investment fund of 100 million for staff, the calculation says we would need a further 1,750 commitments to reach the investment goal. Can we do it, many ask. Is it a mythical golden bullet or are we on our way to achieving net zero in aviation? Personally, I'm interested in investment. I, I, again, I think this is the next big thing and, and I think sustainable finance is going to become a much bigger subject um, over the next couple of years. The challenge is extremely large and the amount of investment is not small. However, as we can see, investment in staff is on the move and sectors with high volumes of business travel including travel management companies, sports, banks and more are being encouraged to invest in SAF.